Welcome to uh, ESD Basics Bite Size and uh, welcome to part two. In today's uh, video, we'll be covering the types of materials, uh, static voltages, and why is ESD elusive? There are two types of materials, uh, the first one being conductors. Conductors allow electrical current to flow easily, so they can be grounded. And as examples of uh, conductors are metals, carbons, and people, and people due to the impurities of the human body sweat layer. Materials that are called dissipative are also conductors and are able to remove electrostatic charges to ground. The resistance of ma dissipative materials is a higher portion of the conductive range. The other type of material are insulators or sometimes referred to as non-conductors and they do not allow electrical current to flow easily so they, therefore they cannot be grounded and examples of these are plastics, glass and dry air. Insulators, like the cup you can see on the graphic in front of you, will hold the charge and cannot be grounded and conduct the charge away. Many of the common activities you perform daily may generate charges on your body that are potentially harmful to electronic components. Um, you can see here a list of activities of walking across a carpet, uh, walking over an untreated vinyl floor, a worker at a bench or even picking up a common plastic bag from a bench can result in many thousands of volts. The higher number is the charge that's generated at low humidity, for example, in a dry environment. Moisture levels or relative humidity in the environment is an important consideration in static electricity. It is well known that static electricity in the form of static cling and static shocks are more prevalent when the air is dry. Heating interior air in the winter months dries out the already dry air in the higher latitudes. Static charge accumulation is easier on dry materials since moisture on surfaces tend to allow charges to slowly dissipate or recombine. It is impractical to use humidity control alone to provide static control since static charges are developed even at relative uh, humidity levels of 90% and greater. So we've just identified to you that uh, an insulator cannot be grounded and a conductor can be grounded. Now to give you a, a, a very quick demonstration on that, what I have here are two uh, paddles. One is a, an acrylic material, the other is an acrylic handle with a conductive plate. If I rub these two panels together to generate uh, static electricity, remember the contact and separation of materials is what determines uh, the, the charge that's generated. If I rub these two together and then separate them, if I hold the conductive paddle over the meter there, you can see an excess of 2000 volts, place that onto the grounded work surface. And the uh, uh, acrylic, the insulative paddle, again, over 2000 volts. And again, I'll place that onto the grounded work surface. If I then was to pick up the conductive plate, you will see that the charge is practically gone. But if I pick up the uh, insulative paddle from a grounded work surface, and I'll pick that up and hold it over the meter again, you'll still see significant voltage on the paddle there. In fact, it's even gone up to over 4,000 volts. Whereas if I pick the uh, conductive plate up and hold that over there, you'll see that the charge has practically disappeared. So that's a very quick demonstration between an insulator and a conductor. You cannot ground an insulator, you can ground a conductor. When you feel the discharge of electricity, that ESD event is about 2,000 volts of electricity or more. The shock, known as electrostatic discharge or ESD, is likely responsible for damaging many of the electronic components in your company. While you can feel electrostatic discharges of 2000 volts, smaller charges are below the threshold of human sensation. Unfortunately, smaller events can and do damage electronic components. Many of the CMOS technology components used in your facility can be damaged by discharges of less than 1,000 volts. Some of the very sophisticated components can be damaged by charges as low as 10 volts. Many of the discrete MOSFET uh, devices used in your facility can be damaged by ESD events of less than 1,000 volts. Some sophisticated components such as used in GMR giant magneto-resistive disk drive recording heads face challenges from even 10 volt discharges. Even less than 100 volts might damage a component. Electronic items continue to become smaller, faster, and their susceptibility to static damage increase. All electronic devices require some form of electrostatic control to assure continued operation and product reliability. 
Static electricity is a natural phenomenon that occurs in all climates and at all levels of relative humidity year-round. As we've said earlier, most people cannot feel an electrostatic discharge unless the static voltage is greater than 2,000 volts. However, some electronic circuitry can be damaged by ESD events that are less than 2,000 volts in magnitude. The damage can be done without people having any sensation of the ESD event. Now, when a wrist strap is worn properly and connected to ground, the person wearing it will stay near ground potential. 